Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, I previously said that it was very difficult to be sending a manned mission to the moon or even further afield without upgrading the buildings. This, of course, was actually a challenge to myself. So I present an attempt to go interplanetary and return using a completely unupgraded buildings. This means I'm very limited in terms of spacecraft design. The part set I have is very small. It has to be under 18 tons, under 30 parts. I can't use action groups. I'm not going to have access to maps, uh, you know, maneuver nodes or uh, patched conics. So yeah, this is what I've built, primarily using jet engines for the early launch. And let's switch back to regular speed to see what happens. Okay, so we're starting to get low on the liquid fuel and uh, in those external engines. Time to throttle up the main engine and use that to accelerate towards orbit. There we go. Now, because I don't have action groups, I can't just right click on the, I can't just shut these engines down on, as a pair. And if I right click on them and try to shut them down individually, I will, I will spin around, even if I've throttled them down because they take a long time to throttle to zero, which is why I have a limited amount of fuel here so that they will hopefully cut out and run out of fuel at a suitable altitude and velocity so I can ditch them and... There! Whoa! That's pretty spectacular actually. Well, there won't be any recovery of those parts. Anyway, from this point on, we are a conventional rocket, obviously with a shower of debris cascading down below us into the ocean, where it will no doubt be eaten by fish or whatever qualifies as ocean wildlife in the Kerbin system. I mean, as tasty as those engines no doubt are, they were really there just to get us through the first 10 to 15 kilometers of the atmosphere so that the main engine could actually put us into a nice circular parking orbit. And we're going to be using a lot of parking orbits because we want a quick save and attempt ejection burns reliably. Like, we might get it on the first try, we might not. But honestly, uh, this was made with a lot of quick saves because... Beyond basic math and calculations, I didn't want to have to spend hours and hours orbiting the sun to uh, to get my EVE encounter. So there we go, we set up and we initiate my first ejection burn here. Now I can exactly calculate the ejection velocity needed, but the burn angle or the time when I'm initiating the burn is large, it's hard to measure, so I guesstimate it. I know my velocity should be between about 3230 and 3240 meters per second. So that's what I do, make that burn. And it actually looks pretty good. I come out and it's almost exactly backwards along the orbit. So first time I get an almost perfect burn to escape. Now it's a case of trimming the orbit and adjusting the inclination to make sure that we encounter EVE. I just waited for the first departure window and uh, basically estimated when that would happen. So I get down, I shoot across and I switch my focus to the sun so that I can actually get the relative angles of the orbit. I'm eyeballing this of course. This is just like the old days of Kerbal Space Program before we had patched conics between uh, spheres of influence. This is almost back to the state it was in when I performed my first moon landing in Kerbal Space Program, but the distances are a whole lot larger. So I've performed the, the relative inclination change and it looks like we're coming in close and except we're now moving faster. So we're going to pass in front of Eve. Time to reload and try again. Okay, second attempt. So, same as before, we saved it just after escaping the sphere of influence of Kerbin. I dropped my orbit in a little because I was going to pass around the outside. And again, we line up with the Kerbal, or the Sun. Officially, it's just called the Sun, but a lot of people like to use the name Kerbal, just like Sol, but with cur extra curbs. Generally, things named by fans in Kerbal Space Program tend to be high curb. Yes, okay, well, never mind. Anyway, so yeah, I uh, get in and I'm trying to align these orbits as closely as possible. Remember, I have to pass within 85,000 kilometers of EVE to enter its sphere of influence. I won't know until I actually do it. And I'm passing in front. So, reload number two. Okay, so the problem is that I'm arriving there too early. So what I do is I basically fire my engines away from the sun. So it's like pushing me upwards again in my ballistic journey and hopefully keeping me higher so that when I do actually come down, I will get there slightly later and, excel and fly past 
Eve from behind. Takes a bit of extra fuel to do this, but uh, you know, we need to do it. We need to make this encounter. What I want to avoid doing is performing a an orbit match maneuver down near Eve because then you will have to use more fuel to do it. And Eve has an atmosphere so you can perform aero braking that will then give you essentially free orbit matching for no delta V, although a small risk of falling into the atmosphere. And this is looking good. Catching up from behind, and bingo, attempt number three, put me into, let me see, how close is this? Uh, where does it go? Where'd my orbit go? There we go, hyperbolic 5,000, oh, that's pretty darn good, actually, 5,000 kilometers. Okay, so to perform aero braking, I need to bring my orbit down to under, uh, under about 100 kilometers. I need to bring it down to about 75, but also while I'm doing this, I want to make sure that I'm more or less orbiting in the equatorial plane of EVE, so that uh, I, it's going to be easy to match orbits with Gilly. Anyway, since we're here, let's do some science. Crew report. Crew report says, you can't help but notice how unusually purple the planet is. Uh, we can't do temperature scans from this altitude because we're too high up. So now we're going to fall down. Our periapse is about 73 kilometers, which should be enough to capture us, but not enough that we completely circularize our orbit. We'd like the orbit to just get captured and no more. And I have, of course, got a save point if this uh, orbit is bad. We'll find out. Let's collect more crew data. You can't help us, but notice how incredibly purple it is. But I can't help but notice where the thermometer is. Collected and recorded. How dull. What an anticlimax. I strongly advise getting the crowdsourced science messages. It really makes the game a whole lot more fun. Okay, so... Looks like it was a little more aggressive than I would like, but ultimately we passed through to the other side, and now we are in our captured orbit. So, I'm going to circularize this orbit fairly significantly. What we need to do is match planes with Gilly, and hopefully we will be able to put ourselves into an encounter with it. It's, the reason we're going to Gilly is because it's nearby, it's orbiting Eve, so it's actually very easy to get to in terms of Delta V. It has almost no gravity, and it's actually pretty high up in Eve's gravity well. So you can also exploit uh, the Oberth effect to get yourself a little extra boost when you're returning from e from Gilly to Kerbin. And we are going to need that little extra boost. Anyway, first of all, we're going to match planes with this thing. Uh, we, of course, are just basically burning along that node marker there to make sure that our orbits are now roughly coplanar. The next thing we want to do is make sure our orbits kind of touch at one point. Uh, since I lack, you know, patched conics or encounter information, I, I have to just kind of guess my way through this. It'll be a slow attempt at encountering this. What we need to do is get ourselves... We, we'll get the, the orbits so that they encounter each other at a, a tangent, and then we'll make sure that, the, that we... Uh, synchronize the orbits by repeatedly passing and then once we are close to it we'll then drop ourselves into a slightly higher or slightly lower orbit that will eventually encounter Gilly. At least that's the plan. So yeah another little plane change correction needed here. We switch coordinates or we switch view to Eve to make sure that we're burning in the correct direction and a little correction there. Gilly is absolutely absolutely minuscule. And its sphere of influence is incredibly tiny as well, so getting close to it is surprisingly difficult. So we, you see me running the time forwards and attempting to synchronize the orbits just a bit here. At this point I kind of decide that the rate of change of the phase is too high, so I bring things down a bit. And from this point, it looks like I should be in a slightly fast, a slightly slower orbit, so Gilly will be catching up with me. And you see it happening ever so slowly, little by little. This is, of course, very similar to the rendezvous technique you're, you'd be using if you're trying to, say, rescue an astronaut from Kerbin orbit. And look at this, we're almost running rings around this satellite here. This natural satellite, of course. We are actually close enough to see Gilly there sitting behind us in the orbit. So, more little corrections needed here and there. I'm being very careful to watch my fuel. I figured out, based on previous attempts, that if you have about 500 meters per second of delta V, you should have enough to escape from 
Gilly and return to Kerbin, assuming you get everything lined up properly. So realistically this means that I need about 30 units of liquid fuel on this spacecraft to make sure that I actually can get back to Kerbin. Anyway, at this point I realize I'm really pretty darn close to Gilly. It's just there if I could just do the illogical thing and fire my engine straight at it. I add about 20 meters per second to my orbital velocity, and I should have probably burned a little inwards, but regardless, we get the encounter. We have encountered Gilly, we have we are at our destination, and it will take us a very small amount of fuel to actually put this spacecraft onto the surface. Unfortunately, because I haven't upgraded any of the buildings, he won't be able to get out and have a walk around, he'll be stuck in his capsule, and he won't be able to take any uh, surface samples. But that's not important, it's just the, it's the challenge that matters, so uh, yeah, let's do what science we can do. Crew report says, it looks like a particularly lumpy rock. You bet you could, you could jet back down there. I bet you can't jet back down there because we haven't invented the jetpack yet. We haven't invented the EVA suit. In fact, Jebediah Kerman thinks that's a space suit, but since we haven't invented it, it's just something that looks, it's just a Halloween outfit really. But as soon as we invent it, he will actually be allowed to step outside the capsule. That uh, hatch is actually just painted on there. I did make a point of including uh, an antenna on this, so at least I could collect more than one data point. Uh, since he can't get out and you know copy the data around, he'll have to transmit the data you know, back to Corbin so that it, uh, it doesn't fill up his spacecraft full of too much science. And it looks like a particularly uninteresting rock, etc, etc. It takes a really, really, really long time to fall down towards Gilly. Thankfully, it's really, really, really easy. You just uh, fire your engines and drop down below 5 meters per second close to the surface. And... Touchdown! We're there! Now we need to figure out what we're going to do and then uh, figure out how we're going to get home. I'm going to do a part two to this. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.